Here we have a Dynamics trolley connected at both ends by springs to clamp stands. The trolley is free to move along the Dynamics track, but the springs will always return it to the equilibrium position. If the trolley is displaced to one side and then released, it will begin simple harmonic motion. There are three conditions that must be met for a mechanical system to undergo simple harmonic motion. The first is that we have a mass that is oscillating. The second is that there is a position where the mass is in equilibrium. We will usually consider any displacement to the right of this position to be positive and any displacement to the left to be negative. The third condition is that there must be a force acting to return the mass to its equilibrium position. And this force is directly proportional to the displacement of the mass from its equilibrium position. Because the acceleration is proportional to the displacement, that must mean that when we have our greatest displacement at either end of the oscillation, we must also have our greatest acceleration. But where in the oscillation is the velocity at a maximum? The velocity is at a maximum as the trolley passes through the equilibrium position. At this point it is not accelerating anymore, but it does have its maximum velocity. To investigate the displacement, velocity and acceleration further, we can plot graphs of displacement, velocity and acceleration against time. To do this, I've put my video into a free piece of software called Tracker. This software tracks the motion of an object in the video and uses this data to create graphs. You can see the dots here representing the trolley's position. These dots are almost like a ticker tape timer. The closer the dots are together, the slower the trolley is moving. The more spaced out they are, the faster it's moving. And you'll see that we are indeed correct that the trolley is moving faster as it passes through the equilibrium position and slower at the end of each oscillation. This data can be used to plot graphs. Here we have graphs of displacement against time, velocity against time, and acceleration against time. Let's begin with the displacement against time graph. You'll see that the initial displacement here is at zero. And then the trolley moved to the left, hence the negative displacement, then back through the centre to the positive. Note that our sine curve here, very smooth, nice sine curve, but note that it is decaying gradually. This is because friction has acted against the motion of our trolley. Now let's take a look at our velocity time graph. The velocity time graph is the derivative of the displacement time graph. In other words, if we take the gradient of any point on the displacement time graph, it will give us the value for the velocity time graph. So for example, here at this trough, at 0 0.7 seconds, the gradient is zero. Therefore, at the equivalent point on the velocity time graph, the velocity is zero. Likewise, where we have the steepest gradient at around 1.7 seconds, as the trolley passes through the equilibrium position, the velocity is at its maximum here on the velocity time graph and so on. Our third graph is the acceleration time graph. My graph is quite wiggly because of the algorithms that the software used to calculate the curve, but you can see that it still forms a sinusoidal curve. Again, the derivative of the velocity time graph gives us the acceleration time graph. So where the gradient is the steepest on the velocity time graph, that will give us the greatest acceleration. And where the gradient is zero on the velocity time graph, the acceleration is around zero. Note the relationship between the displacement time graph and the acceleration time graph. At the point here where the displacement is at its greatest negative value, the acceleration is at its greatest positive value. When the displacement is zero, the acceleration is zero. When the displacement has reached its greatest positive value, the acceleration has reached its greatest negative value. This fits with our rule that the acceleration is proportional to the displacement but acts in the opposite direction. In other words, a is proportional to minus x. The final graph we'll look at here is a graph of acceleration on the y-axis against displacement on the x-axis. Ignore the scatter of points, the general trend is what's important here and we can see that there is a straight line relationship as acceleration increases, displacement decreases.
showing us again that acceleration is directly proportional to displacement, but acts in the other direction.